Okay, well I've lifted the back off the camera. I want uh, this bracket off. I need this knob off here, so I'll undo that nut. Lift that knob off, that's our focus knob. Now I've got two shim washers. They went there. And the other one went here. Here's the side cover. And we'll get the screws in place on that. Get these two in first because that's where the shims are and I don't want them falling out and getting lost. These screws are a bit awkward to get started. They're quite a coarse thread. They may even be not particularly well formed. And there must be one more. Alright, that might not be the right one. This time. It's a bit happier. Okay, we put our focus knob back on. We'll start that there. That's at the uh, in front of the end of the scale. Yeah, something's rubbing there. So that's the knob rubbing on that cover. So I didn't have that roughness before. I think I decided earlier that that knob was bent. Yes, it is. All the shafts bent, one or the other. 
it's going to have to be straightened more than that or that focusing is always going to be a bit stiff. Let me see if I can determine which is which. Let's run that down. That shaft is definitely bent. I'll mark that where I think it's bent and then I'll put the knob on and give it a couple of taps and see if we can get it to come over square. I think that this is the side that needs to be moved. Sorry for the noise, there's some tree surgeons working next door and I think they're running some terrible noisy shredder. Okay. Alright, I'm going to tap that knob over and hopefully that will do the job. I'll put that cap on there so that there's no tendency for that knob to want to fold up which would be a nuisance. Right, I need a soft mallet now. Well, straightening things up and uh, burnishing around the inside of the cover because it's only fairly thin aluminium with the edge of a screwdriver just reduced that so there's no rubbing now so that's nice and smooth so the focus is all smooth and working nicely I'll put that strap lug back on here so I can put the camera back on but uh, then I can turn my attention to refitting the front probably. Once the shutter and everything's back on the camera I can close up that part. I do have to fit a new focus screen. But uh, hopefully that'll go smoothly. All right, so nice smooth film advance, nice smooth focus. Of course I won't put the cover on that yet because I've got to uh, adjust the focus once I get everything back on the front of the camera. But I'm ready to put the shutter and shutter and lens assembly back onto this. Alright, and put a few pieces back in here. Put this tra light trap, dust trap arrangement in there. A nicely rounded over edge goes in. This piece, this couples the uh, shutter and the film advance mechanism together. 
I'm just going to give that a wipe with some molybdenum paste so that it moves smoothly. Well, probably not as much as that. And this sits on there like that. So as the shutter is released, it pulls this arm down. Okay, now fighting this piece back on from memory, that was a trial. It wasn't fun to get that off. Oh, look at that. If you hold your mouth right, it just falls in. I was shift the film advance so that this wasn't fouling anything up. And we want four screws. Yeah, they were originally locked in place with a touch of lacquer. So I have to consider whether I'm going to do the same this time or leave them as is. Yes, I think uh, a touch of lacquer certainly wouldn't hurt. I'll just get a toothpick so I can apply this stuff. It's usually useful to use an obvious brightly coloured lacquer when you're fixing screws internally in a camera so that the next repairer can see that you have lacquered them in place. If you decide that it would be a clever idea to use clear lacquer in a place like that it might not be obvious that you've got lacquer on them and therefore the future repairer would have problems because he'd be trying to get screws loose that were locked in place and that would be a nuisance so make it obvious you've been there and you won't have that problem okay so I've got to think about getting the shutter assembly back in there and I think realistically I want to get the, le the lenses in place at least the the rear group in here. Otherwise, we won't have, won't have it. Won't be easy to fit it from the back of the camera. I've put that in place. I'm just going to use a friction tool to tighten that rear lens group. That's it. And I've cleaned the internal face there, I'll make sure I clean the external face now before I pop that in place. Not that it's a problem particularly to get to that surface from inside the back of the camera. That's good. The front group I will screw, screw that loosely in place. I want to clean that yet but I just want to keep any dust from getting into the shutter. And that is pretty much ready to go back on the camera. 
Now certain things we have to connect up here. We've got the cocking lever here on the shutter. Just a couple to our film advance here. And at this point we need to couple this mask which is the parallax mask and uh, that needs to be done just checking to see if there's anything else I need to be aware of here my viewing lens is here that can go in from the front it has a lock collar which we will lock in position basically we'll make sure that the focus is set correctly so that the taking lens when uh, focuses correctly to the film plane and then we match our viewfinder image so that also corresponds Right, I better check my fasteners now, make sure I know where everything is. I've got my spacers because there are various shims here which go underneath that shutter assembly and I have those all carefully labelled left and right so I should be able to put those things back where they came from. Okay, to the next bit. Before I put this on, I fitted that post. That post caused me grief. That's our flash sink uh, post. That caused me grief when I was taking it apart because I pulled this off with the front cover and that spring there was supposed to be hooked around that pin and I hadn't seen that. I don't know whether there's any way that that can be coupled easily with the lens in place, with the shutter in place on here. Whether you could get to that spring and hook it onto something, you possibly could. But regardless of that, it's easier to deal with it this way, I think. So, to get this on the front, well, we've got to couple these, this up, this arrangement here has to go over this post here and this piece needs to be fixed to here so we'll start with the difficult one which is the one down here and I've got to see if I can get this all together I'm sure that spring is there to take any play out of the system but it does make everything awkward It really doesn't want to stretch onto there. Alright, that's sitting in position. I've got to get the screw in there now.
Oh, that seems to work. What am I catching on the shutter release, I think? Yep, that goes there. Okay, so the shutter's basically settled in. I've got to couple this uh, mask arrangement here in place. And I've got to get my shims in position. I, I mentioned that I had the shims all labelled and ready to go. Now these shims, you'll see that they have two holes, two notches in them. Now the hole here, that's for a screw to come through from the top. So the, this little hole goes to the top. This one's labelled right, that's for my right. I'm not sure what the best way to fit these things might be. It might be actually to put the screws loosely top and bottom and slide them in. ones here. Right, that should do. Why is that screw covered in gunk? Let's get that out. I'll clean that one up. I don't know why that's got that on it. Oh, it may show through the other plate here. Right, so I'll get those screws started. I'll slide my shims into place. Alright, that's in place. Now these are somewhat awkward to get in position, so I'll get the screw that goes through the hole in the centre on this side in place. Now they shouldn't be able to fall out and I can do the ones on this side of the camera. I've only got two to place on this side, so it's not so bad. The thin ones are a nuisance because they want this to get stuck behind things. Right, that's good. Get that screw in there. those up. Oh, 
Okay, they're all back where they came from. And the shutter cocks and fires, so that's all a bonus. That's all good. It's exactly what we want to see. Okay, let me check that everything's pushed back firmly. Check that those screws are done up. This is all square, is it? Nothing's rubbing on anything. I think I might want to slacken these screws up, see if I can rotate this very slightly. Yeah, we're catching on something. I think it's the lens tube at the back here. I think that's got that uh, shield on the lens tube is running, rubbing in the frame. Let's try moving this about a bit. Yep, that's better. They're pretty fiddly, these cameras. That's good. Okay, well that leaves me with this mask arrangement here to get the screw into the side of this mask arrangement. At least that's achievable, I think. I can get that screw in there. You can't quite see it. It's tucked under this edge here. I'm going to get that in place so I can see that the uh, video camera battery is about to expire. Well, that's all appears to be working normally, so that's good. At this stage. I don't know if I can put my viewing lens in. Our oh, viewing lens has got to go in before the front panel. Okay, well, I can do that. I better change this video camera battery. Well, I've measured the lens board to the back of the camera distance. Both sides were very close. They were certainly as close as those shims would allow you to get. So I was very pleased with that. I adjusted my focus so that my focus is correct for my taking lens to the film plane. I've adjusted my viewing lens so that that matches on the focus screen. So, principally, that's everything back together in the working sense. I, I am going to replace the screen on this camera for my customer. But uh, my next task here really is to put that front cover back on here and um, get that all settled and seated. And now I can put the leather back on the cover, on the camera. Because at the moment, there's no leather either side. Or, of course, on the front. Having finished with the focus adjustment, 
I can put this cap back on here. Right, and I'll just tighten that up. In this case, a pair of stiff tweezers will do the job more than adequately. That's good. So, the front of the camera, what have I got to achieve here? Well, that button can come off, that's our self timer button. I suppose we could see if that worked, couldn't we? Let's set the shutter to something intermediate. Cock the shutter. Let's take that little piece there out that I had jamming the shutter. Right, and if we set this, what do we get? It's running down and it fires the shutter. So that's all good. Self timer is definitely working. We'd already checked the, the flash when I was doing the shutter earlier, so I know that goes. Did I clean all of this? Yes, I did. I was just checking to see that I'd done the front rings here, front control rings, and they are all clean and ready to go. What have we got to achieve here? Well, we can take that screw off for a start because that'll be going back on shortly. We have to couple the aperture setting here and the focus setting, the uh, shutter speed setting here with the rings on the front of the camera here. This pin being our uh, shutter speed and this little hole in here coupling to the aperture setting. So that's always a bit entertaining to get right. Basically, you normally start at B and um, ma maximum aperture f3.5 in this case. That's normally a good place to start. So we'll try that and see how we get on. Okay, it's that. it should be B. Let's check that. Yes, it is indeed. And if 3.5 should be, let's just open that shutter and have a look from the front. Yeah, F3.5 should be about there. So if I set my dials here to B, and F3.5, We should be in the ballpark. Got to get this up through the this hole here, and of course I'm probably going to want spacing washers here and here, here and here. So of course we want our flash uh, surround there. Not that way up either. That way up would do nicely. It's got a little washer around it. I'm not, I, I'd imagine that was just a spacer to stop it rattling around loose. Now I don't know whether that's settled onto the control rings for the shutter itself, for the aperture and so forth. I can check from the back of the camera whether I'm coupled to the aperture because I'll be able to see it moving. It feels like it's coupled to something on the shutter speed but I'm not sure. 
Let me just check that aperture first. Yep, that's definitely coupled. And the shutter speed, well, what's happening? Let's find out. No, that was B, but my dial here says 1, so that's not right. So we're not coupled there yet. Let's change that speed. It might have just dropped in, actually. Let's try it at a tenth. Yeah, okay. So the shutter speed and the aperture are connected correctly to the control dials at the top. I want to decide about these shim washers, how many I need and where I need them. If this plate comes back in contact with the body at the infinity position, that we're certainly going to need them. It's close at the top, on that corner. So at this corner I certainly need a shim washer there to lift that corner of the cover up slightly. The other, other parts look quite good. Okay. Well, I've got a good supply of these washers, so I'll just measure them and make sure they're all the same size. If they are, I will spread them out evenly so that uh, we get everything to sit nicely. There's something I didn't put back in before I put the shutter on. It's this pin out of the shutter release. The shutter release will work with your finger at the moment, but this is the piece that would couple to your cable release. And I haven't got that in. So that's got to go in. But uh, now I just need to make note of where I want these shims. As I say, it looks fairly even on that side. And it's just this top, top left. that really needs one and it's just oh because I can see the gap down here I can see what fits in the gap and that will give me an idea of how many shims I need to add see that washer fits under there quite nicely of course it won't go under there at all Yeah, so I need, need one like that thicker washer at this end to bring it up square. This will all be because it's been thumped about at some stage. All these are aluminium pressings. Aluminium's fairly soft. All right, I'll work out what I want to do with these spaces. And probably what I'll end up doing is, is stacking them at least two in each position. And I'll probably stick them together with a little bit of lacquer on the plate so that they don't run away while I'm trying to get everything assembled. There's nothing more frustrating than trying to lower something over the top of loose washers which then scatter to the four winds. And this camera is grizzling that the battery's flat. <laughs>